Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look into the case of Christian Longo. He made news in 2001 when he murdered his wife and children and became one of the FBI's most wanted criminals. So the question is, why did he kill his family? But first, let's start from the beginning. Christian Longo was born on January 23, 1974 in Michigan. He was raised by strict Jehovah's Witness parents he was involved in his church and since a young age he did door-to-door -door ministry so he was very religious allegedly well Mary Jane Baker was born on April 25th 1967 she was also a Jehovah's Witness and she was a part of the same congregation as Christian and his family Christian and Mary Jane met in a church parking lot they got married when he was 19 and she was 25 in 1993 they had three children together Zachary Sadie and Madison so according to Mary Jane's sister they were a picture-perfect family and Christian was a real-life Prince Charming who did everything a husband was supposed to do which would make other wives jealous they enjoyed sailing and jigsaw puzzles in their spare time they were like a walking commercial and here's the thing I have said this before on my Susan Wright's video don't trust on picture-perfect families or relationships usually they never are it's quite the opposite well we had a short background on Christian and Mary Jane so all the information coming next added to what led Christian murdering his family and his explanation for the killings is going to shock you so let's take a look even though they had a picture-perfect family seen from the outside their issues with money started before they even got married and money would be poison to the couple and the catalyst to a tragic ending Christian had an uncontrolling spending habit. He liked to spend more than he earned and show it off. So before he got married, he bought an engagement ring he couldn't afford and did it on a payment plan. Unfortunately for him, he came a little bit into a crossroads when in one month he had to choose between paying his rent or the ring. To pay both, he stole money from the place he was working at the time. And remember, he was a teenager at the time. Teenagers make dumb choices. But the next day he gave the money back and resigned from the workplace. Even more, his roommates, who were also Jehovah's Witnesses, snitched on him to the church and he was sanctioned, which prevented Christian and Mary Jane to marry in the Kingdom Hall. But Christian's issues with overspending didn't end there. With time, it got worse. See, Christian, on his own words, was addicted to new cars, nice clothes, and tropical vacations. He was addicted to a lifestyle that wasn't his and he couldn't afford. Christian Christian became a manager of a company that distributed the New York Times. Kids were born into the family, Mary Jane was not working, and the money kept flying out the window. Appearances were important to Christian, so Christian started a construction cleanup business, which started well, but it became a financial disaster. But the thing is, even though he was in a huge amount of debt, he kept showing off his richness and he exaggerated the success of the business, which was non-existent. Unfortunately, his father invested thousands of dollars in the business without knowing the truth about it. Neither Mary Jane knew about the amount of debt they were in. Christian would still show off his new purchases to his friends, but that wouldn't stop one of his new toys being repossessed. Well, because debts were still piling up, Christian started to set up fake addresses to deflect bill collectors. He also created a fake driver's license for a test drive and he never returned a car to the dealer shop. He used his computer to print false checks from companies that owed his business money and he cashed them. Eventually, the companies contacted the police and in September 2000, Christian was caught, went to court and received received a light sentence of probation and restitution. You would think this would make him stop, but no. 
When he was in court, the guy who had no money wanted to present himself for more than he actually was. And as a result, he was ordered to pay restitution, but for more than he could actually handle. The church got a hold of his money criminal acts and Christian was expelled from the church. He then promised his wife Mary Jane he would be truthful, blah, 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 and straighten their finances, blah, 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 blah. But his spending habit was stronger than him and he decided he and Mary Jane deserved a last hurrah so Mary Jane got corrective high surgery and Christian scuba diving lessons but their finances kept on sinking and those scuba lessons couldn't save him from himself so guess what he did he got a credit card in his father's name without his knowledge so Christian was in debt and dragged his father into it too but money wasn't the only problem Christian and Mary Jane had in May 2000, Mary Jane confided to her sister she had discovered emails from Christian to another woman. She confronted Christian and he told her he didn't love her anymore. She paid too much attention to the children and spent too much time with the children. She wasn't fun since the children were born. See what he did there? He manipulated the situation and he twisted to make it look like Mary Jane was guilty for him cheating. It was her fault according to him. And remember this, cheating isn't a mistake, it's a choice. The person chooses to cheat on their significant other and then they will twist everything to make it look like you are the problem and responsible for it. Don't fall into that rabbit hole. If he or she cheated, it's because they chose to disrespect you and cheat. Well, still after finding out about his infidelity, Mary Jane chose to stay with Christian. And later on, Mary Jane's friends told the police the two had planned and to divorce but continue to live together to raise the kids and keep their finances separate. So, with all of his problems, with creditors calling and church members stopping by to check on Mary Jane, Christian decided to move his family out of state and this would actually violate his probation. He didn't move, let's be honest, he ran. They moved into a warehouse in Toledo, Ohio and he started making up stories he was going to renovate it until then they had no kitchen facilities, no plumbing, and you would think he stopped his criminal activities, but no. He lied to Mary Jane, saying the rent was paid for six months, but instead he was cashing forged checks again. He then started to attempt selling stolen machinery, but the cops caught him. But before he was charged, he fled again with his family, without Mary Jane knowing what was going on. They stayed at campsites, motels. Then they sold Mary Jane's wedding ring. Things were escalating quickly. They went to Oregon, rented a vacation house, but he couldn't afford payments. They had to leave, but not before he stole something from there. They never stayed in one place because he couldn't afford it, say so they were always on the run, which would make both families concerned about them. After the move, Mary Jane lost contact, so her sister went to try to find them. She spoke to Mary Jane, but Mary Jane refused to leave Christian. When they started moving again, Mary Jane's siblings filed for a missing persons report and Christian's parents were concerned too. After all of this, I think we can see Christian's behavior was becoming more and more reckless and he did everything not to get caught by the police or let people know he wasn't the person he pretended to be. While they were on the run, Christian took a part-time job at Starbucks, but his ego took the best of him. He told his boss and work colleagues he was living off an internet business and he took the part-time job because he liked Starbucks coffee. Regardless of his struggles, he still wanted to maintain appearances, but he realized he was at a dead end. He knew they had to move again because they didn't have money. So he made a choice. He wanted out. He wanted to be free. He wanted to start over and he wanted to be in control again. And his idea of starting over would shock the nation and put families through tremendous loss that would never heal. 
While his family was sleeping, Christian was awake and he was worried about his finances. And that's when things unfolded. Christian strangled Mary Jane. He put a body into a suitcase and she was naked. Then he strangled his two-year-old daughter, Madison, and he also put her body into a suitcase. According to medical examiner, Zachary and Sadie died of asphyxiation, even though some reports say they drowned. He dumped both suitcases containing the bodies of Mary Jane and Madison off a dock. Both Zach and Sadie had rocks tied around their ankles and were dropped off a bridge. After killing his family to explain the absence of Mary Jane and the children, he told the manager of the condominium he lived. He had dropped off Mary Jane and the children at the airport and he said he and Mary Jane were having problems in their marriage. He also told a co-worker Mary Jane was having an affair with another man and she had left him. He also said he wasn't sure Madison was his daughter. Because the Longos hadn't been seen together as a family for a few days, a search for the family members began. But what they found wasn't what they were looking for, unfortunately. On December 19, 2001, the body of four-year-old Zach Longo was found floating face down. Three days later, the body of three-year-old Sadie was found weighed down with a rock in a pillowcase tied to her ankle. Five days later, December 27, 2001, divers found two suitcases under a dock at a marina. One suitcase had the body of two-year-old Madison along with some clothing and a dumbbell, and the other suitcase had hair stuck out, and inside was the naked body of Mary Jane. Christian was a potential witness or a suspect, but he was nowhere to be found. On December 21st, Christian fled the state. But then he decided to flee to Mexico and he did it by committing another crime. He bought the plane ticket using the information from a stolen credit card receipt. Christian Longo was now on FBI's 10 most wanted list. When Christian arrived in Cancun, Mexico, he no longer was Christian Longo, he was Michael Finkel, the New York Times journalist. When he worked at the distribution company, he used to read articles by Michael Michael Finkel. Christian also wanted to be a writer, and for a while he got to live that dream while staying in Cancun. Christian was living careless and free. He was partying in paradise like the killings had nothing to do with him. He rented a cabana, spent time with other travelers, he smoked pot, he toured ruins with a German photographer who was deceived by him thinking they were working on a piece, and eventually they got involved romantically. While Christian was enjoying living his new lifestyle as Michael Finkel, a tour guide recognized him from a wanted poster. A federal arrest warrant was issued, Christian left the hotel he had been recognized, and a few days later, authorities captured Christian Longo at a campsite and he was taken into U.S. custody. Christian Longo was charged with multiple counts of aggravated murder and unlawful flight. He pled guilty to the murders of Mary Jane and Madison, and he pled not guilty to the murders of Zach and Sadie. He had a few tricks up his sleeve to try and get away with murder. In March 2003, the trial began. So let's take a look at the prosecution and defense's strategy, but let's keep it short. Let's start with the prosecution. Prosecution stated Christian killed his family because they were a burden. According to the prosecution, Christian had planned the killings in advance. During investigation, they found on Christian's computer information from a website called Hitman Online, which meant he had been looking for ways to kill his family. They also found obituaries, which suggested he was planning to change his identity. He also went to another state and sent a postcard to Mary Jane's sister, pretending it was Mary Jane. The prosecutors claimed there was a witness who placed Christian at the bridge in the early morning of December 17, 2001. A local man, after hearing about the bodies found, he told the police he had seen a man in a reddish 
minivan stopped on the bridge. This is when Christian threw the bodies of Zach and Sadie. According to the prosecutors, there was also a statement Christian had made to an agent, which was, I sent them to a better place. The defense questioned the photo identification the eyewitness did linking Christian to the murders of Zach and Sadie. They said it was conducted in a questionable manner. They also said the family was alive on December 17th and visited Christian at work, but security tapes had already been recycled. For me, this is the defense trying to create reasonable doubt. The defense also questioned the fact the bodies of Mary Jane and Madison were dropped in a different place and manner so maybe it wasn't the same person who killed the four. When it came to Christian's statement, I send them to a better place, the defense claimed it wasn't consistent with his religious upbringing. They wouldn't use that type of terminology. Well, it wasn't consistent with his religious upbringing, all his criminal activities, and also his infidelity. So much for reasonable doubt right there. Just look at his criminal past. Well, Christian and his huge ego decided they wanted to testify. And during his testimony, he recounted to what happened, allegedly. Christian stated he went on a date with Mary Jane on December 15th. She told Christian things were going well for them, but she confronted him about the lies he had been telling. He said he thought about telling Mary Jane about their situation, especially because Ren hadn't been paid. On December 16th, he got home from work. While in bed, he told Mary Jane about their situation. Christian said Mary Jane became very emotional. He admitted the van was stolen. It contained stolen gasoline and the rent hadn't been paid. Then Mary Jane berated him. She slapped him and said she would never trust him again. Christian then left the room and slept on the couch. He woke up with Zachary playing. Then he noticed Mary Jane had vomited the floor. The morning of December 17th, he asked Mary Jane to allow him to stay at home and take care of the children. But Mary Jane yelled at him. She drove Christian to work. Christian kissed the children goodbye and went to work. After his shift ended, Mary Jane picked him up. She was only wearing a bathrobe and no shoes, but the children weren't in the car. When they arrived home, he had to help Mary Jane get in the house. That's when he found Madison's body on the bed and Mary Jane blamed him. Then she said the other two were in the water. Christian then said he lost control, he wrapped his hands around Mary Jane's neck and he squeezed and eventually Mary Jane was dead. He then decided to put the bodies of Mary Jane and Madison on two separate suitcases. Then he realized Madison was still breathing and even though she was still breathing, for him it was like she was dead. So he smothered her until she died. Then he filled the suitcases with clothes to make more comfortable for her. Then he threw the suitcases containing the bodies in the water. To make a summary of his testimony, Christian once again blamed Mary Jane for something he had done. And of course, those who were in the courtroom were stunned by his testimony. And then the prosecutors would state Mary Jane didn't have a history of violence or bad temper. And they also said she couldn't physically dump the children in the water with heavy rocks. On April 7th, 2003, Christian Longo was found guilty of aggravated murder of Zach and Sadie. Remember, he had pleaded guilty for the murders of Mary Jane and Madison. What's more interesting is that even though there wasn't much evidence, it was actually Christian's testimony that finally got him in. During penalty phase, the prosecutor said Christian should be put to death. He was a con man who manipulated everyone. He had planned a way to escape prison. He committed other infractions while in jail. He was a danger to society. But defense presented some mitigation factors. They presented Christian's father was actually his stepfather. His biological father was an alcoholic and he was violent who abused Christian's mother. He also beat 
Christian sometimes. Then his parents split. The defense also said Christian didn't have a history of violence. All the infractions committed in jail were minor. The escape plan was just a hole he had made on the wall to see the outside. I like his defense team, I really do. They give really cool explanations to his behavior. It reminds me of those stories about ludicrous questions lawyers made in court. For example, this never happened, but I'm going to make one up. For example, Dr. Whatever, how did you know the victim had died? Well, when the victim came to me, it was already a skeleton. Do you know those stories? You see them online. So, moving on. On April 16th, 2003, Christian Longo was sentenced to death for all of the four killings. In 2011, Christian Longo confessed to killing his family. He also said he had studied with a psychologist and he had come to terms he had narcissistic personality disorder. Christian this day is on death row at Oregon State Penitentiary. Since 2011, there has been a moratorium on executions in Oregon. Michael Finkel, the real journalist who met Christian, wrote a book called True Story Murder Memoir Mea Culpa in 2005. In 2015, it was turned into a movie. So, this is the story of Christian Longo. And I'm sure many of you have noticed the similarities between Christian Longo and Chris Watts, another man who killed his family and children and he blamed the wife. Two men who chose to make a new start by making their families disappear. Even though Christian Longo made a confession in 2011 for killing his entire family, it really doesn't erase, at least for me, his audacity to give the version of the events during trial, putting the blame on Mary Jane. He was vile, egotistical, self-centered, and fast forward 10 years later, even if he acknowledged what he did, I, I want to remember this happened 20 years ago. He made the confession 10 years after the killings. But the thing is, for me, it's all a publicity stunt. His reason for blaming Mary Jane doesn't add up to me. So he couldn't comprehend what he had done, so he projected the blame on Mary Jane. But he didn't seem upset for what he had done after the fact. He was living large and carefree in Mexico. This doesn't seem like a man who couldn't fathom what he had done. Did he detach? Was his persona Michael Finkel his refuge? I don't think so. For me, it was just a way to deceive people and get away with murder. And his callousness reached its peak when he viciously tried to convince people Mary Jane had killed Zack and Sadie. And he was so distraught, mad for revenge, he strangled her than Madison. Why Madison? Wouldn't he try to protect her? Lies. For me, they're all lies. He simply didn't care for all the damage he caused his own family. Mary Jane's family, who had to watch this assassin get all the publicity, feeding his ego at the expense of Mary Jane and the children's lives. There's one question remaining. Will he ever get the lethal injection? Most likely not. I just can't simply comprehend the death of the children with both Christian Longo and Chris Watts. There was no mercy. They strangled and smothered them. How cruel can you be? They chose a cruel death for the children. That's more than unforgivable. I send my sympathies to Christian Longo's family who found themselves in the middle of a horrendous situation. They lost their grandchildren, cousins, and at the ends of a family member. How do you make peace with that? But most importantly, I send sympathies to Mary Jane's family. Their loss is irreplaceable. People got to move on with their lives after Christian was put in prison. But for them, everything went on hold as processing those killings seemed too hard to bear. All at the ends of a selfish and egotistical individual. And to end this, don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell button. Thank you for watching. See you the next time. Stay safe.